Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you. going to Starville, Mississippi, and you're going to milk a cow, you can't, you can't wear. wear Converse. Can't wear your chucks, can't wear your jacks. So what do we wear? Had to got some boots. Man, I got some That's boots. Right. We put them on. Mine didn't fit. But mine fit you. You were just fit me. You were nice enough to trade. The shoe was on the other foot. What a great day. We milked a cow. We made biscuits. And I got to paint a painting of a bulldog. What else are you going to paint in Starville? Let's go milk some cows. These really feel great, man. We've been doing this a long time. Yes, very long time. And you know, I, we, we started doing these things together. And uh, I, I, if I remember correctly, at first it was mostly just like, give people something to come out and see what this book is. Right. Here's here's the dog and pony. And, uh, but the, I think the, is the, the very first uh, dual demo we did where you paint and I cook mm -hmm. uh, was right when uh, Southern Palette came out. Would have been 2002, is that right? Yeah. And it was in the That's McRae's at North yeah. Park Mall. That's the one. Wyatt did a watercolor demo without any water. I don't know how you did it. And back then, I was using some type of electrical uh, cooking thing, yep. and we blew fuses in, in McRae's department store, and it was a nightmare. And we had about 50 people there, and we had no idea what we were doing, and we've done it 150 times. I know. It was a, it was a promotional thing. We did that to kind of, uh, as you would say, bring the book to life. Yeah, it, well, it started organically. We didn't, and then three weeks later, the book was gone. We sold out, you know, like that. It was totally unplanned. And, and, and now we've you know, done it all over the place since then. And because I'm gonna tell you, you won't find two bigger cheerleaders uh, in this state uh, than Y Waters and, and me. I mean, we love, we love this state. And the art that I do is done on location and that means I'm painting, I'm painting Mississippi, you know. Yeah. We're just driving around. And I want people to go away from this thinking they've been driving around Mississippi, which is what we've been doing. Right. You know, driving around Mississippi. Oh, that's great. I love that. And Getting stopping, lost. Driving Mississippi. around Mississippi and stopping and eating. Yes. And experiencing and talking to the people. I love, oh, that's good. The meat and the threes, the yeah. fried chicken, yeah. the catfish, yeah. the biscuits. So um, Starkville is really, um, on the verge of just, it's, it's in a little small boom right now. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a different town. I started here as a freshman mm -hmm. in 1979, and it is night and day. I was visiting college, it's yeah. very different. It's, uh, it's beautiful. You know, Johnny Cash has a song about Starkville. Got thrown in the jail. You know, going to Starkville, uh, you got to go to Mississippi State University. Dairy. Mississippi State University Dairy. I'm sure there's a sign. This is the thing about farming. When I was in junior high school, we were going to do a little steak, steak dinner pregame, and one of the kids was making fun of another kid, a Mississippi State fan, said, oh, you know, it's a bunch of farmers. And I remember I thought, how crazy is that? So we're about to eat a cow. Yeah. And this guy's making fun of it, man. It's, but today, farming is cool, dude. Yeah. And it's the original small business. Yes. You know, it really is. You know, that's a great point. The cheese that's made here is made from I the milk so. that's yeah, like that here, Edom, you know, the Edom cheese, Mississippi oh, State, Mississippi cheese. State, the, the red ball. Grilled cheese sandwiches made with that Edom cheese. I eat them to Edom cheese. I think we okay. are here. Hey, let's go milk a cow. All right, here it goes. So had you, you had never milked a cow. I had, no, never, never. I had never milked a cow. Now, do they keep the chocolate cows separate from the skim yeah, cows? And, and we've got the strawberry ones, and they stay over here. <laughs> Dude, Kenneth. Kenneth was the man. Anybody that is considering learning about how to milk a cow, 
Oh. You go to the Mississippi State Dairy Barn and you talk to Kenneth, because that dude is awesome. We milk at 3.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the evening, seven days a week. Christmas Day, your birthday, it doesn't matter. We're still milking cows. You gotta get that milk out. He knows his stuff, he knows. but he is a character too. Mm -hmm. A guy, he, he was fun to be around. Some people are just fun to be around. It's a very Mississippi thing. Yeah. A lot of characters in, in Mississippi, and he, and he was one of the better ones. And he is, if you say cow milk expert, and I imagine somebody, he really fit exactly what yeah. I thought it would be. You go to the grocery store today, and a gallon of milk costs you $4. Right now, a dairy farmer in the state of Mississippi is getting a dollar and fifty cents for every gallon of milk, but it's really hard for a dairy farmer to make money right now. There are not a lot of independent uh, dairy farmers around. There are not a lot left. It's, it's a it's, lifestyle. It's, yeah, I mean it's a it's a family thing. First book we did Southern Palate. I, one of the things I wanted to do was to paint a cow, a uh, Holstein cow, with spots on it. And I, I put I, instead of painting the spots, I painted the Southeastern Conference. I painted the states on there. Right. It's called State That's Inspected. Awesome. But good. it was really hard to find that cow. I, I found it in Bovina. There was a dairy at one time in Bovina, Mississippi. Did they sleep standing up? No, they lay down. All right, so this cow tipping, this whole cow tipping well, thing. Well, that's a little bit of a folk tale. Have there. you ever done that? Uh, they won't tip. I didn't, I didn't grow up around horses, but there was a cow pasture, and so we used to jump on the cows when they were down and ride them. It was it's a really bony, bumpy, <laughs> barely ride, and they didn't like it a lot. No. I can't believe you, know, you did that. There wasn't much to do in the country, you know? It was fun. Hey, let's go milk a cow. <laughs> Here's the deal. We, we know all about this cow, but just for the camera's sake, <laughs> camera's sake, act like we've never done this before. You gotta stick your finger yeah. up there. All right, this is your cow's teeth. A cow don't have none of the other terms that you can think of in your That's mind. That's cow's teeth. I, he was thinking them, I wasn't <laughs> yeah, thinking yeah. any of them. So, either. this is your cow's teeth, point it straight down. All right, take your finger from your other hand and make a C. All right, wrap the C around the cow's teeth. Press your thumb, slide it down. Now, you're not trying to pull it off and take it home as a souvenir, <laughs> but you got to gradually slide and squirt that milk out of that teeth. Okay. Think you can do that? I think I can do it. All right, well, the public now yeah, knows. Yeah, now now the public knows <laughs> how to do it. I know y'all do We already knew. We were just checking. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go All this right. way. <laughs> So remember what we showed, finger and thumb, grab it at the top, and slide your fingers down. Squirt the milk out of all four of those mouths. Oh, you squirted it on yourself. Okay, I got something going. You got milk? I got one. Uh, all right, we gotta get all four. Okay, there we go. Man, look at there. All right. Thank you, baby. She's working with me. Well, you made Drew's mad, Wyatt. Okay. Everything we can't get her to stop. Her body's telling her it's time to milk. But you hear the vacuum? Now stick your finger in. Whoa. All the way in. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> All right. They just kind of go in there, right? Okay. Yeah, you got it. Wow. Hey, and that's the milk coming dude, out. You got milk all over you. He's messy. All right, this is great. Where are the cookies? This gives you a whole new appreciation. Because look, I'm a milk drinker all my life. My brother and I would drink a gallon of milk a day. Seriously, we'd have a half gallon in the morning and a half gallon at night. And you don't think about everything that goes into just that half gallon of milk that we had in our refrigerator in the morning. You know, the cool thing about that dairy they take that milk, they serve it in the cafeteria all over campus, they make ice cream, they make all sorts of dairy products. That Eat'em and, cheese is, is, is my oh, favorite cheese. The Eat'em cheese, the holy grail of cheese in the state of Mississippi. They've done this multiple times. A lot of times we've done it. That was some uh, pretty uh, efficient milk girls. You gotta be very lactose tolerant. 
I have one more thing that y'all have to do. All right. Now that y'all have been to the farm, now that y'all milk this cow and y'all become proficient at it, right. we're gonna we're gonna learn the milkman's handshake. Yeah, that's right. Okay, here we go. This the church, this the steeple. You know, open the door and there are the teats. Oh golly, I'm creeped out, man. Be honest with you, I was a little worried. You know, we're we're milking cows at Mississippi State, and I thought, man, mm -hmm. they're gonna think. You know, it's this, this whole Cal College thing and all that. But Mississippi State is so much more. I don't know if you know or not, but they're the lead university for the FAA's drone research. Wow, I did yeah. not know that. They're working with the United Nations to solve world hunger. It's one of the top three schools in the nation for cybersecurity. And you know, there's that place over there where the students develop that car that gets like 100, yeah. 125 miles a gallon or something like that. But they're curing diseases and working with the United Nations. It's there's a lot going on. Oh, isn't she sweet? Ain't she sweet? <laughs> oh, three, 333 likes Joey. This entry will begin with Dear Dairy. <laughs> it was a little creepy. I felt like, you know, milking a cow, I don't know how it felt to you, but it felt a little creepy a little bit. I don't know why. Yeah, you kind of feel like you're violating the cow at first. We just met, you know, we just met. And there I was, and you know. And, and when, when we're through drinking their milk, we eat them as hamburgers, oh. correct? Yeah, 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 so that's- They that's, live on. And he said 70% of fast food uh, hamburger beef comes from dairy cows. So I'll tell you one of the highlights of my day. I mean, it was cool learning how cows are milked, but meeting Kenneth, yeah. Kenneth is the man. He's like cow milk advocate. He is. Ambassador. He's the cow whisperer. Yeah. He's like cow Yoda. Mm. <laughs> He's the cow whisperer. Yeah. I agree with that. You can hear about milking a cow, but until you do it, it's it's just pretty abstract. Uh, and paintings like that, I mean, you know, you, when you when you put yourself in front of something, something always happens different than what you thought it was. The cool thing is there are three bronze bulldogs on that campus, and and you chose the one I'd never seen before. You always kind of choose um, a different angle and a different view, and, and you've got the eye, man. You see the world differently than everybody I know, and oh. it's, a, it's a way better perspective uh, from from your point of view. Well, thanks for that, but it's, it's a bulldog town. It's a bulldog town. You know, a lot of communities can be defined by they have universities, they're the teams that play there, so the Bulldogs have been pretty hot, so I painted the Bulldog, I painted Bully. Now your brother Drew's got a pretty cool story about Bully. He was Bully, uh, you know, the mascot that dressed yeah. up in the Bulldog suit. Uh, it was during uh, Bear Bryant's tenure oh, at Alabama, the legendary coach, obviously, and uh, before a game, uh, Bear Bryant was very famous, like pregame, he would watch his team warm up and he would lean against the goalpost and kind of cross his legs and watch the team. And Drew kind of got on his hands and knees in the bulldog suit and, and hiked his leg on oh, Bear Bryant. Wow. The Mississippi State crowd went nuts. It didn't go over too well. The, the president of the University of Alabama, he called the governor of Alabama then the governor of Alabama called the governor of Mississippi, and then Sunday night, the governor of Mississippi called the president of Mississippi State University, <laughs> and then Monday morning, the president of Mississippi State University wow. called Drew St. John, and he was not happy. He hiked his leg on Bear Bryant. I'd be dope. Coaching legend. What happens in Stark Vegas doesn't necessarily stay in Stark <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> Especially when you get urinated on. You know, I, I went to Mississippi State in 1979 as a freshman. Left Hattiesburg, drove up with a, a, two clothes hampers in my hatchback, and, and wow. I'm gonna tell you that campus has changed a lot since 1979. It's a beautiful campus. Yeah. And uh, I think with the, with the landscape, architecture, department and, the, and a regular just architecture yeah. department. That you, has you, its influence you, on you, you really do, and it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. It's well maintained, full of great people. Uh, Mark Keenum, the president there, is, oh, is, is, is just super Mark and Rondam. 
Um, I agree. They put the pieces together. But Starville's come a long way too. That whole cotton district, uh, it had just started when I was up there, and you know, Dan as, Dan, influence, yeah. as Dan Camp says, you know, that was kind of the first of the new urbanist projects. Father of way new urbanism, it. right there in Starville, Mississippi, right. Dan Camp, before Andreas Duwani. And you can pronounce his name too. <laughs> Vegas. You know how that got started? Somebody, I have no idea. Somebody was really kind of tongue-in-cheek, uh, self-deprecating uh, thing that somebody started, I think, in about the early 90s, you know, uh, Stark Vegas. And now it sticks. They actually uh, use it in the marketing and everything. I mean, you'll watch a football game and then the, and the announcers are talking about Stark Vegas. Michelle Tehan, you're gonna love this lady. It's the biscuit lady. She, she, it's a great story. She opened with like a Kickstarter or GoFundMe campaign, never borrowed a dime, didn't go to a bank. She opened, I mean, it's true American dream type stuff. She's, she's a working mom, she has four kids. She gets to work at like four in the morning, starts making biscuits. It's a simple, small little shop and um, you know, it's perfect for a working mom and she can get get home in the afternoon and probably I think most of her most of her work's done by ten or eleven. I've been there many, many times when she is sold out by eight o'clock in the morning. When they're gone, they're gone. That's yeah. it. Yeah. And uh, a lot of bakeries like that. It's a great little shop right off Main Street in downtown Starkville. got three ingredients. We use a self rising flour, we use Crisco, and we use buttermilk. That's it. Great. So, um, you know I don't measure a thing. I know you don't measure a thing. I do not I've been, a I've been in here often, and I love Saturday mornings on football weekends, just hanging out with Michelle while she's too busy and I shouldn't be in here talking to her. But Like this? Yeah. Now we're gonna test two things. And I, I've got a lot of faith in your ability to teach how to make biscuits. I'm not sure how much faith <laughs> I have in, in Wyatt's retention on how to make biscuits, but yeah. we're gonna find out. So folks, here we are. This is a, a momentous occasion. Wyatt Waters is about to make biscuits from scratch. This is gonna be good. It's gonna be fantastic. Okay, I know. Check it off. You ready? I'm ready. All right, so let's get some self rising flour in that bowl. This is so different than that canned biscuit that people have just you know, adapted to, but it's not, it's not the same. Mm, it's, no, it's not even close. No, no. no, it's just convenience. And, yeah. You know, life is just not about yeah. convenience. So you probably have about three good cups in there, maybe a little more. And this is a cup. <laughs> you you measure with your hands. I know, well, yeah. yeah, that's probably like six cups, really. Yeah. Okay, now. <laughs> I grab, I grab this. Well, you want to break up these lumps oh, first. Break up the lumps, that's right. Yeah, right. so um, not everybody's going to have a sifter around their house, right? Mm, I don't. So grab a fork. Get rid of all those that's lumps and things. If you do that. not do that, when you bite into this biscuit, you are going to have so many things of just flour. That's just so Dude, this like a pro. Yeah, you got this. I'm thinking about concrete when I'm doing this. She's got different flavors of biscuits. There's so many different ways to be biscuits. Yeah, she puts sprinkles on biscuits. She makes homemade Pop-Tarts. Dig in there. Get a, more. you will have to do a little more than that. Okay. But I'm going to tell you, man, I am just a plain buttermilk biscuit guy. I want to put butter on it and I'm going to put fresh uh, jam, jelly, or Me preserves too. on there. There you this go. It's a little bit like Mythic Cows. A little bit like Mythic Cows. So basically now we have super clumpy flour. All right, so we are at the point, some. you're ready for some butter okay. now. I just continue to use my hands though. Yes, you sure can. Yeah. Use salted butter or unsalted? I, I, I always use unsalted so I can regulate, but what I do, this is, this is Robert's biscuit. Cut that sucker open, fold it out, butter on both sides, and then I put salt on yeah. it, and then the jelly and jam. I'm gonna tell you, it's amazing. I went 45 years without adding salt to a lot of things because I thought, well, that's sweet. It adds another kind of layer in the flavor profile. I agree. I like the salt on it. It's great. That's beautiful. Okay. Oh, I love it. Am I done? I'm done. No, that is great. 
I'm making a big clump now. You making a mess is what you're doing. I am. I'm making a glorious mess, it's which will turn awesome. into biscuits. You are going to lift it. Yeah, oh. you're gonna sort of move it around. Is every time I fold it, I dust it. Okay, so okay. it doesn't stick to you. Correct. So fold. There you go. Now you have a super sticky yes. part. I gotta do that some more. There you go. I enjoy making the biscuits. And now you can them. make, if Wyatt Waters can make biscuits, <laughs> anybody can make biscuits. Crumb over. And go on down. There you Come go. Come on down. Pop it out. And move this to the side. Yes. Fantastic. Kind of like there you go. lift. These really are fantastic. Well, I'm just so happy. This is, this is a good feel. This is very satisfying. It is. Is it not? Yeah, it I love absolutely this. is. Let's bake some biscuits. All right, let's put these in the oven. We actually have a convection oven, so we're baking on about 350. Um, if I were at home, I would have that on 400 degrees. Um, electric or gas, 400 degrees. Come here, on. convection 350 is going to be about 18 to 20 minutes. Um, home oven probably closer to 20 22 minutes so yeah awesome job thank you so much sorry about that i know it happens all right butter and sugar on a biscuit so that's your favorite way to eat a biscuit it's one of those kind of places that has got its own personality again and Oh, and I got, to, I got to sign the wall. There's a wall where people come in and you can sign, you know, sign your name, you know, Minnesota or from Chula, Mississippi or whatever. Old biscuit that she, I think this is one she made. This is one of the bigger, better ones. Actually, it's all, it's all celebrities. Yeah, well, and you know it's what? Hilarious. It's hilarious. A lot of Mississippi State coaches and athletes and your, your dad would be proud that you're on the oh. wall with all those Mississippi State baseball players. I made the wall. Thing. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right. Yeah. That's what they were. Yeah. But I, I drew a biscuit, so I, I drew a biscuit up there because you probably not be able to read my name anyway, but I did draw a biscuit, which can be so many different things, you know. You have to know it's a biscuit to look at it. It's, it's a biscuit. I've got to talk to the uh, biscuit lady too, though, because your signature is in a prominent place and mine <laughs> is way down. Mine got signed like two years ago and I got this little spot. I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna petition for better placement of my uh, signature. I think you deserve that. Yeah, I really I'll take it. I've, I've eaten enough of those biscuits. I've, I think I've earned a, they are great. I've, I've earned a spot, maybe two slats up. Had a really good time. I, I made biscuits. Time. You, you did I a great biscuits. job making biscuits. I got to eat and them. And so from from uh, now on, you're going to be making uh, yes. your own biscuits at home. Yes. No measuring. Flour power. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Flour to the people. <laughs> you know. She had so much personality. The biscuit lady is awesome. That was her magic ingredient. I am a Michelle Tehan fan. I mean, I really am. You know, she started a business. She didn't go to the bank. Uh, they did a fund me campaign. Didn't and have to borrow any dough. Didn't. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, she works, you know, four in the morning till I don't know, ten or eleven till the biscuits run out, and they run out every day. And on the occasion they don't run out, she feeds the community. That's how awesome she is. She'll send them to the fire department or the police department or something like that. So um, Mississippi needs more Michelle T. Hands. The first time I cooked, I cooked from our cookbook. Yeah. And uh, you know, and we're working. We're the first finished, one. Yeah, our, yes. And we're working on our fourth book now, and that's coming pretty late to the table there. But and now you make biscuits. Yes, she and, had me at you know. She, you don't have to measure. <clears throat> Just a little bit of this and this. I thought maybe I. Could but it, that. I mean, that that's a real thing. Wyatt makes biscuits now because she oh, yeah. taught uh, him how to make biscuits in uh, in her shop. Uh, she and her husband kind of worked at night and, and worked on that place. It's really Ameri yeah. the American dream. It's a great story. It, it goes to show you can make a living doing just about anything if you got mm -hmm. this secret ingredient, which is just passion, passion. and determination. Exactly. It's yeah. passion. We get to travel around Mississippi and 
get I get to paint sometimes I, more than I more than I ever dreamed and I get to eat all this great food and hang out and listen to music this is you know someone has to pinch me here because I can't believe we're doing this so Plus, I'm, we're putting this book together which is very exciting it's a tough job but somebody's got to chew it <laughs> thank you I like that one yeah. The paintings seen on today's program are featured in the A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. This beautiful volume also includes Mississippi Heritage Recipes, A Mississippi Palette Cookbook. Palette to Palette with Robert St. John and Wyatt Waters is made possible by a generous contribution from the Mississippi Farm Bureau Federation. Additional funding is provided by this and other public television stations and from viewers like you. Thank you.